Hi everyone, it's me, Jeff Nataro, your Director of Global Services Engineering with NetBrain. And I'm here once again in the training center at our headquarters in Burlington, Massachusetts. If you spend any time as administrator for a NetBrain platform, you know that one of the biggest challenges is creating and maintaining a proper digital twin of your physical network in NetBrain. This becomes an even greater challenge if certain network devices you're trying to discover are owned by a different team and they won't give you SNMP or CLI access. So how can NetBrain help you fill in these mapping gaps? Well, we have two great options to get you back on track to a complete domain. First, a simplified device replica we call generic device. And second, manually importing the device configuration files to create a virtual device. In this video, I'll show you how to quickly create a generic device that can show both layer three and layer two connections and even support NetBrain AV pathing. Let's check it out. As I was recently doing an audit of my network, I noticed that one of my maps may have been missing a device. It appears that my site map for LAX was missing the Cisco ASA firewall. After checking with one of my colleagues, it appears the local LAX SecOps team won't allow anyone read access to their firewalls. This is a great opportunity to use the generic device feature so that I can avoid a big hole in my sitemaps. And to create a generic device in NetBrain, you must ensure you have these four critical pieces of information. The device's host name, the device's management IP, its layer three interface details, and its layer two interface details. From the end user desktop, go to the upper right corner of the screen, click on the current domain name, and then open the domain management interface. With the domain management interface displayed, click on fine tune, where we'll create our generic device. In fine tune, we'll navigate down to network and topology, and then finally to generic devices, we will click the add link to start the process. At the top of the add generic device dialog, I'll specify the host name and management IP, and then I'll specify the device type and driver so that NetBrain can display the proper device icon on the map and load any additional device details for mapping. Next, I'm gonna load in my layer three interface details. Let's click add to define the interface properties. Depending on how much detail is known about the device you're recreating, you can define interface type, include IPv4 and IPv6 addressing, and even specify the VRF. For my Cisco ASA firewall, I'm gonna define two layer three interfaces. Even though I don't need this for my device, let's click add for the layer two interface information to see what's available. Similar to layer three, we're able to define the name of the port, but now because we're specifying layer two, we can identify the mode as well as the VLAN. Let's go ahead and cancel out of this dialog. Lastly, with everything completed, let's click okay to create the generic device. With my Cisco ASA firewall device created, I need to execute one last critical step before checking my map. I'm going to jump up to Topology Link Manager and then manually rebuild the Layer 3 topology so that all potential neighbor devices to my Cisco ASA firewall can update their neighbor relationships and connections. If your own generic device includes both Layer 3 and Layer 2 interface definitions, Make sure to rebuild both layer three and layer two topology here. Back to my pre-existing LAX map, I'm gonna search for the device that I just created in the advanced search bar. Great. Not only is my generic device now a recognized device in the platform, but it also indicates that it has two interfaces and four layer three neighbors. As you saw, I can click on both of these links to get more detailed information. I'll now click the map button and see what happens. Well, as anticipated, NetBrain fills in my layer three map of the LAX site and even auto links the generic to the device to the other neighbors displayed in the map pane. Now, as cool as it is that I just poofed a network device into existence, if you're like me, having a completed map just isn't enough. I know that tomorrow I'm gonna to end up troubleshooting a network issue that requires me to execute an AB path either to 
or from my LAX site devices. Now, can I actually execute a path through my fake Cisco ASA firewall? Well, you bet I can, thanks to the route table fix up function. Before I start this part of the process, building route table fixups can become quite involved. So once you see how I do this, I recommend pre-planning your most critical traffic paths that will traverse your generic device before making any changes. Let's first set the outbound path from my core switch in LAX to the last top router before my DM VPN. I'm first going to right click on US LAX SW2, go to view device data, then click fix up route table. I'm then going to go ahead and add my destination subnet, specify the mask, the outbound interface, and the next top IP. Once created, NetBrain automatically fills in what it believes the next top device is, which is our generic device. We click OK, and we've just updated the virtual route table for this device. We'll go ahead and repeat that process on the firewall. With my outbound routes configured, let's go ahead and do it reverse configuring the inbound routes. So starting with US LAXR1, we'll do the same process. And then once again on the firewall. With our road table fix-ups, now it's time for the grand reveal. Let's see if we can test a live path from my device in LAX out to Boston and back again. All right. With my Cisco ASA firewall virtually back in place, I can take my time to build out the rest of the interfaces, connections, and routes as time permits. More importantly, my map looks a whole lot more complete and is now ready to help me troubleshoot. As you just saw, generic devices are a great way to quickly plug the holes in your NetBrain maps. However, as any network engineer will tell you, nothing truly beats full SNMP and CLI access to a device. If you found this helpful, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the NetBrain YouTube channel. You'll automatically be notified when we release more videos like these to help you get the most out of your NetBrain platform. If you have questions, comments, or ideas for future videos, be sure to leave a comment below. Don't forget to visit us at www.netbrain.com to learn about our latest no-code automation innovations, and we'll see you next time.